What's going on everybody? Today we're back with the TRX4 Sport budget build. If you're not familiar with the budget build, this is where we take the TRX4 Sport unassembled kit in this version and we upgrade it with $50 every week. Now, this is the fourth or fifth version of the budget build that I've done so far. And this time to kind of try and make this a little bit more fun and different from the last ones, Matt from the Skill Builders Guild and myself agreed on a handful of special weeks where we get to do things a little bit different or outside of the normal terms of the budget build. And this is one of those weeks again. Last week was a DIY week where maybe I broke the rules just a little bit. But regardless, we changed up the look with a free or nearly free tip at least. But this week, again, one of those outside the box weeks and it's almost the opposite of last week. This week, we get to do some modifications just not taking the budget into consideration. And the two mods that I decided to do today, I chose for a very specific reason. The first one that we're going to do is my favorite, and that is putting beadlock wheels on the vehicle. Now, arguably, beadlock wheels aren't necessarily a performance upgrade in many cases. They're just purely for looks, and they do help with being able to mount tires and dismount tires easily, so there's that convenience factor. But while actually in use, they don't really function all that different than the wheels that even come on the kit. So the wheels that I chose, I'm going to use a set of Vanquish Products Method 101 V2s in orange. Orange is my favorite color. Since I went with a fairly neutral color on the body so far, I figured that I could add that accent color on the wheels. Normally, if I'm gonna go with a bright color on the body, I don't do the same on the wheels because it's hard to match it exactly that color. So I'm gonna go with an orange wheel. I think it looks really nice. And on those wheels, I used a 350 SLW hub. That just gives you a nice mid-range width. It's just a hair wider than stock. So if you wanted to get as close to stock as possible, you could go with a 220. 25 hub, but I think 350 is kind of the best starting point. Now, since these are an SLW compatible wheel, there does leave us the option of a bunch of accessories that are gonna be available down the road. Things like center caps or weighted disc brakes. There's just a lot of options open to us since we went with a wheel that has that bolt pattern. Now, when I set out to do this week, I also had intentions of changing out the tires, but I'm gonna leave these Canyon tires on here mainly because that while tires are a very personal preference thing, there's a lot of options out there and some people like brand X or some people like brand Y, I'm gonna leave that to a further week because I do like to change tires and there's things that go along with changing tires. So for now, I'm gonna leave these Canyon tires on there because they also do pretty well. So, you know, you don't need to run out and change the tires. These just are going to work well. We already saw in Matt's video last week that you can do some simple siping if you'd like to, and maybe we'll do that in the future as well. But I've never considered the performance of these Canyon tires to be offensive by any means. So I don't have any problems leaving those on on there. The one thing that I am going to do to these tires, however, is I'm going to vent them. Now, I always prefer to run a vented tire. The stock wheels that come with the TRX4 Sport are a vented wheel. I don't like to vent my wheels, I like to vent the tire. And that is simply by putting two eighth inch diameter holes in the actual tire tread. This is something that I've done on basically every rig I have, and I've never torn a tire because of it. So don't be too concerned about putting a small hole in your tire. I've ran however many tires over however many miles and it's just never been an issue. The biggest concern that comes up with people when they vent their tires is what happens when water gets in there. And that's a, you know, a logical question. And if you're super concerned and you run in a ton of water, then maybe leaving your tires unvented is fine for you. But leaving your tires unvented is not necessarily the best performance option. The best setup that has been shown to work time and time again over years and years of competition and scale riding, all of that is a vented tire with a good foam setup. Now I'm running a stock foam setup, but again, these foams aren't terrible. And I think they're gonna work for a little while until they start to break down. And in later weeks, we'll definitely look at upgrading the foam, either when we're upgrading tires or if we just need to replace the foams that are in here because they've broken down too far to keep them performing well. The other mod we're gonna do is I'm going to install the Traxxas inner fender wells. Now, the reason that I chose to do this this week is because Matt already installed these. And I didn't really wanna just double up on a normal week on something that Matt had already installed and I know that we're going to have those weeks where both of us are just going to end up either having a same mod or a similar one that one of us already did, but 
I thought that I wanted to throw these in now. I really like the look of an inner fender inside of this, so you can't necessarily see through the truck. I think that we touched on that when I installed that Bomber RR10 interior in this. So I think that installing these inner fender wells now is gonna just be a nice progression. It's not really a performance upgrade, it's more just of a visual thing, but I think that it's a good piece to add and I really do prefer the look. And lastly, while I was at Team k, &K someone walked up to me and handed me just a fistful of bomber heads that we can use for our interior. I mentioned in the last one that we needed to wait until it was in the budget to add them. But when someone comes up and just hands you a fistful of things like this, I totally appreciate it. And adding those to this week, also very appropriate. And the other reason why I'm fine with adding the heads in at no budget on this is because there were some really good suggestions last week when I discussed it. Everything from Pez dispensers, which I think was probably one of the best suggestions. That's just a simple little thing. There's a million different styles and they're a dollar. So, you know, hard to beat. So I don't feel bad at all adding these scale driver heads into our truck without adding them to the budget. And again, just thanks for taking the time to walk up and hand them to me. I actually just got back from that event yesterday and I actually haven't had time to go get paint for that interior. So I'm going to set those heads off to the side for now and we'll wait until we get that interior painted to actually get those installed. But just want to say that we're going to drop them in and again, thanks. But let's get those bead locks assembled and onto the vehicle and let's install these inner fender wells. Now the wheels from Vanquish Products have 24 beadlock screws on the outside. You just take your time with a 1 16th standard hex driver and put all of those little tiny screws in around that outer beadlock ring. Once you have that part done, there's an aluminum crush ring on the inside and that actually goes inside of the tire first. So once you have that inner crush ring in there, then you take the two halves of the beadlock wheel with that front beadlock ring already attached, and then you start to push the two halves together, lining up the holes in the back, and then start to tighten down the five or six screws that are in the back side of the wheel, depending on the style. And that is what clamps down the beadlock feature of these wheels. With the tire mounted to the beadlock, now we're going to insert the SLW hub into the back side of the wheel and attach it with the six screws on the front. To install these front inner fenders on here, we need to replace this front upper shock tower. To do that, we need to remove the upper shock bolt, the two bolts holding the shock tower onto the chassis, as well as the pan hard bar on the front driver's side. We also need to remove the two screws attaching the front cross brace to those shock towers. We're gonna reuse that factory hardware to attach the inner fender back to the chassis. With that front inner fender attached, you can now kind of see the difference between that open side where the stock shock tower still remains versus that nice closed in inner fender that we have now on the driver's side. Now, one thing to show is that this inner fender actually doesn't go all the way out to the edge of the TRX4 Sport body. If you place the body on the chassis, there's still a pretty decent gap around that inner fender to the body itself. And Traxxas actually has a solution for that in this part here. This is part number 8081. And these are kind of like a rubber widener setup. Now, if you wanna use these, they do take a little bit of kind of finessing to get into place. They actually come with a drill bit that you need to take and drill out these post locations that go around the outside of this inner fender. They're kind of pre-spotted already, so it should allow you to really line things up easily and drill those out. After you have that done, this piece actually goes to the inside of this fender and then it screws in through the inside into each of those spots with the included hardware. I don't run in a ton of mud or anything like that where I'm super concerned with that gap between this inner fender and the inside of the body. So I'm not going to install these personally, but if you like running in a lot of wet conditions and you want to maximize the amount of protection that you can get with inner fenders, then this would be a nice piece to add to your car. I'm going to leave them off, like I said, because I'm not super concerned with that. And also I don't necessarily know that I just want to add this additional weight to the top side of the chassis. But with that being said, I'm going to go through and install the rest of the inner fenders onto this chassis. And after just a little bit of work, we've got our new wheels and our inner fenders installed. 
These are pretty simple modification. The wheels are mainly cosmetic, but they do add a huge amount of convenience and they do allow us the option to add some other accessories down the road. The inner fenders are going to be a nice modification for our first running video so you're not seeing up in through the body. I have my stock TRX4 Sport ready to run here and I think once you start looking at that one compared to what we've got going on now, it's a big difference not seeing into the inside of that body. I don't always put the highest weight on pure scale looks, but I think that closing up the body does make a big difference. So getting our interior done and the inner fenders done is really my main goals for a body like this. On those rear inner fenders, I did take the opportunity to adjust the shock angle. Since those inner fenders turn the top of the shock body to 90 degrees, I'm able to lay those shocks down quite a bit to free up that rear suspension a little bit. I moved them to the most forward position of those rear inner fender shock mounts, and I think it just softens it up a little bit. But getting to this week's question, Earlier in the video, I talked about tires and the fact that I didn't change out these Canyon tires. But I think down the line, I'm most likely going to change them out for something, but it, there's a lot of options. Personally, I think I wanna stay with something close to the height that's already on this, but I wanna hear what your guys' thoughts are on which tire we should throw on. It is absolutely going to stay as a 1.9, so no 155 or 2.2 suggestions. So throw them out there, I'm interested to hear what you guys are running. There is no budget tally for this week and we're wiping the budget clean, so we're starting starting back over at zero dollars the next time we're adding modifications. But the good news is, is that next week you're going to get to see this truck out on the rocks. And I'm gonna take my TRX4 Sport that's completely bone stock along with me, just to kind of give us a little bit of a baseline to see the differences between them. Out of the box, these two vehicles should have been almost identical with, of course, the difference of all of the accessories that come on this TRX4 Sport unassembled kit but everything that we've done up to this point should more than offset that difference, but we still have to see. But with that guys, thanks again for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed these videos, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the TRX4 budget build videos as soon as they get uploaded. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.